Hello, I'm Luke Singleton and welcome to Spark Recruitment's Illuminate interview series. As an IT recruitment specialist, we're lucky to partner with a number of high profile IT employers in the Australian market. We get exposure to their groundbreaking work. In this series, we'll be showcasing the story behind their success. We're here today with David Sharp, CEO of Circa Rosetta. Welcome, David. Thanks, Luke. Thanks for having us. Um, David, obviously you have two brands to manage in your role as CEO, the Circa brand and the Rosetta brand. Could you give us some insights into the function of the two, please? Yes, yes, so, so it's a bit unique. We have, we have two brands. Uh, the Circa brand is actually the parent brand and it's, uh, it grew up uh, servicing universities in Australia and New Zealand. So there's about um, 33 universities that are members of uh, Circa. And we, we've curated financial data over many years, dating back 25 years for the academics to conduct research. And uh, we have a number of sources. The ASX was a critical source at the start. And in fact, they provided some seed capital to, to uh, get the, uh, the circuit business off the ground. Academics, in the way they conduct research, is quite, they're quite unique. They do tend to squeeze everything out of data and um, they help government set policy and even uh, come up with innovations that are uh, monetized around the world. Uh, but our function is purely to provide them access to, the, to those uh, resources. Uh, we have property data from CoreLogic, we have um, Morningstar data, more recently uh, company, company fundamental type data. So they're a pretty important uh, base for us, but it is a not-for-profit um, organisation. The Rosetta technology business is actually the commercialisation arm of the Circa company. And uh, so that's, that function there is to service external uh, clients. Um, again, in the same area, but it's largely big data technology. Um, as well as analytics, and we've been doing that since uh, 2005 with the Rosetta Technology brand. Okay, cool. And my understanding is within that Rosetta brand, you're one of the first businesses to actually commercialise a big data solution. Yes. Um, I'd love to know some more about what, what you've done and how you've done it. Okay, so I'd like to say we sort of were in big data before it became trendy, and uh, it's certainly trendy now, and it's it's prevalent in many industries, but in capital markets in particular, so uh, there's a lot of data captured and in that industry they call it industrial exhaust. So every buy, sell, order that hits an exchange, a stock exchange around the world is captured. And any news, any, any, any information that's transferred is captured on tapes. And back in 99, I think it was, Reuters had all those tapes stored on, uh, on pellets, stored away. Uh, they'd attempted to build a historical file uh, for the purposes of building sort of historical trading models and the technology just didn't exist. This business actually in early 2000 collected that data from Reuters, flew it out here on jumbo jets, wow. reconstructed the, the data off the tapes. Um, we're talking about 450 stock exchanges around the world, so it's quite voluminous. We now have, uh, having reconstructed that data, we have something like two petabytes of historical data. Um, and every day, uh, we have 10 billion transactions hit the website. Uh, the rules for each uh, uh, country vary and each exchange. And so there's about 650 global banks and hedge funds who pull that data down every day at the end of the day to recut their algo models for the next day's trading. So effectively, it's programmatic trading. It's a manual exercise. So. So in about 2004, 2005, this was commercialised around the world by Thomson Reuters. So it's been a monumental success and a huge transformation for the way trading occurs on, in, in stock markets. So today about 75% of all trades are conducted using this historical file. So it's really part of the ecosystem of, of global trading. Oh, so you, you disrupted the market before it's trendy to say disruption. That's true. It's true, uh, and and it's a little it's a massive achievement for such a small business and to be domiciled in Australia. So there are a number of people involved in making that happen. It was the visionary of, of getting uh, seeing the value in historical data and then training models to actually predict what the outcome might be. There was the technology to actually understand how we're going to ingest that volume of data. It's it's a massive amount of data every day. Um, and compress it and then present it back up um, in a very timely manner was uh, an unbelievable achievement in itself. And then the distribution through Reuters originally, now Thomson Reuters, to go out and actually sell that into the major banks and hedge funds. So it was a, it was a phenomenal partnership. So it's certainly something we're seeing uh, more demand for, both within sort of commercial and, and private and government. Uh, I suppose that makes the um, access to talent 
quite a challenge. Um, I'd love to get some insights about the culture and, and you know, how you attract and retain high value IT professionals. Yes, yes, well that is, that's true, it's very difficult and, and uh, to one, attract the skills, uh, cultivate them and develop them because it's not a standing start. Uh, but in here we have quite a, there's creativity to start with and it's looking at business challenges and then uh, understanding whether there's a business model that could actually be improved uh, using uh, the big data technologies, analytics in particular. Uh, then there's the innovation. Uh, so some of the things we built with the tick history solution for, for Thomson Reuters didn't exist. So we had to build our own uh, database technologies to cope with that volume. So there's the creativity to find the opportunity, the innovation to actually deliver it. Uh, there's, there's, uh, so, so they're a unique style of person. Collaboration's key as well. I mentioned a number of people that played roles in making that such a success. And the sharing of the knowledge uh, was, was quite key. We have quite a strong alumni here too, so there's people that have been very proud of the achievement. And while some have left the company now, they've, they've come back quite regularly, partly because of the beautiful surrounds <laughs> we have, but also just the, the amazing achievement um, and, the, and the ownership that they have of that. So it's quite a unique culture. Uh, and, and the sharing of the knowledge, it's, it really is a team environment. Not everyone knows everything because there's components that people specialise in and uh, people respect uh, respect the knowledge shared by others. So I've, I've found it quite a unique culture and we're building on that. Um, people come here, learn a lot uh, off other quite talented people that have been here for some time. Um, others come in with new skills as well and add to the team immediately. So. Yeah. Certainly our, our experience has been that, that you know, you're an exciting business that people are attracted to because of not only the technology but also the environment, the space and, and what you're doing in the industry as well. Um, so thanks for those comments. Obviously my favourite question that I'm asking everyone I'm interviewing is around your, your advice as an industry mentor. Um, obviously IT is a fast moving space. What, what are your top three tips right. for aspiring IT professionals in today's market? Top three, they can change um, over my time. I, I, but the number one for me is really connecting the technology expertise with, a, with a, an appreciation of the business outcome. So the, 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 the biggest contributors of my time have been people of good technical skills that just spend a little bit of time appreciating where the business benefit is. And then, because there's many ways to solve a problem and uh, it, with an appreciation of the, the outcome that we're trying to achieve, really clever sort of technical people can say actually there's a, there's a better way to do that. So uh, just coupling techn technical skills with a, an appreciation of business is, is number one. Number two uh, would definitely be uh, the, the creativity, um, uh, sort of continuous learning I suppose to start with, that's compulsory because the, the technology is moving quite quickly as you say, but the, the, the third one is the collaboration. Uh, because it is moving so quickly and we have a good environment where people share their knowledge really well, uh, they, the more you share, the more you get back. And the whole open source mentality is, is uh, aligned to that. So we, we have quite an open uh, culture here where people share their knowledge and in return they get just as much back. So I would encourage software engineers to actually continually share their knowledge um, and they'll top up in, rever in, in reciprocation. Great stuff. Thank you very much for your time, sir. Really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, obviously look forward to keeping in touch. Thanks, Luke. Thanks, Thanks for the opportunity. Cheers.